Yar, my warm fuzzy butter cookies. Jesse here with Pugwash on the ghost ship. So without further ado, let's get scrunching. Ship's charmer. Just the shop we're looking for, said Captain Pugwash. A ship stormy hearty is now we can buy all the things we need to spring clean the black pig and make her the smartest pirate ship afloat. Come on, let's have a look inside. Aha, they are having a sale here. Galleons of special paint. And very cheap too. Now, as you may remember, the captain was a very mean man, and he couldn't bear to miss a bargain. So he bought all the paint in the shop for one bag of gold. But he was in such a hurry that he forgot to ask what sort of paint it was, or what colour it was. All hands on deck. There's not a moment to be lost, he shouted as his crew carried the paint aboard. Cut the road, Jake will be here next week. We must have the painting done and be well away before he arrives. But Captain Pogosh was wrong in expecting Cut the Jake next week. Jake, his worst enemy, was already there. Ha 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 ha, with two of his ferocious gang, hiding further down the cave, watching everything that went on aboard the Black Pig. Look at that, me handsomes, chuckled Jake. Paint pots, eh? Why, I do believe that ruffian is going to paint that rotten old ship of his. Here we are, waiting to sink him like a stone the moment he sets sail. Ha ha ha, that's a joke, eh? Ha ha ha. On board the Black Pig, the pirates were opening the tins of paint. Here, Captain, this is funny-looking stuff, said one. It has no colour. Smells queer, too, said another. I've never seen paint like this before. I reckon you've been swindled, Captain, much of the mate. This stuff's no good for painting ships. I think we ought to try stirring it up, said Tom the cabin boy. Put it in that wooden tub. You can never really tell what paint's like until it's properly mixed. So the pirates pour picked up the tin and poured the paint into the tub. Then two by two they stirred it and stirred it until their arms ached. But each time the captain inspected the mixture, it looked exactly the same as before. It's getting too dark to see you properly, he said. No good going on now. We'll try again in the morning. Tom, pour out the cocoa and everybody off to bed. We're going to have a busy day tomorrow. Ooh. So the pirates had their supper and settled down for the night. The mate washed his face and brushed his teeth. For he had been well brought up before he went to sea. And the others tumbled straight into their hammocks and were very soon asleep. The mate blew out the candle and all was quiet, save for the lapping of the water against the ship's sides and the snores of the sleeping pirates. The captain Pogosh was still awake in his cabin. Nom nom nom. He, had, he was eating his supper, specially cooked by, by Tom and served with a fine red wine. <sniffs> Always last thing at night, he took a stroll round the deck to see that all was, sh all was ship shape. On this particular evening, he went up as usual with his lantern to make his rounds. Unfortunately, the sea breeze was strong and the oil in the lantern low, and after a few moments, the flame went out. Woo! The night was dark, but the foolhardy captain continued his walk. Thought he knew where everything was aboard his own ship, but he was wrong. Lying across the deck was the rope perilously left by one of the crew. Captain Pogwash caught his foot in it, woo! Lost his balance, woo! And fell headlong into the large tub of paint. Oh, splash! A moment later, the crew were suddenly woken from their dreams of buried treasure. Ah! In the doorway shone an unearthly light, and a strange, glowing figure stood there, shaking and fluttering. It's a, it's, it's a g -g ghost, stammered the mate. It's the g -g ghost of the captain. Nonsense, said Tom, appearing with a candle. That is the captain. He's just fallen into the tub of paint, and he's shining all over. It must be luminous paint. Shuddering shellfish, said the captain. Luminous paint indeed. Just wait till I get hold of that shopkeeper. Wait, captain, said Tom. I have an idea. I know what we can do with the paint. Listen. The next day, Pogosh and his men worked very hard indeed. Cut through Jake and his men, and his crew were also hard at work aboard their ship. Load up the cannons, sharpen their cutlasses, and wind the powders dry, ordered Jake. Gonna settle with that rogue Pogosh once and for all. There won't be a ship man left him live on the Black Pig by morning. Ha ha ha. Behind high rocky cliffs outside the harbour, Jake and his crew were lying in wait. Jake knew that the Black Pig would have to pass that way wouldn't to make the open sea that night. By sunset, Jake's preparations were complete. As darkness fell, he and his men waited in silence to open fire the moment the Black Pig ran the point. There was a sudden shout from the lookout. There's something coming, Captain Jake. Look, look. There, oh, there before the horrified gaze of the pirates appeared a strange and terrible sight. Ah, a ghostly ship, 
gleaming in the darkness was a silvery light sailed slowly around the rocks and made straight for them. That's not the black pig, it's a ghost ship, cried one. Hi, with the phantom crew, I'll be bound, shouted another, and at once panic broke out aboard Jake's ship. Ah, his crew were known as the most heartless and fearless of the pirates afloat, but the sight of the ghost ship frightened them out of their wits. As it came steadily closer, they rushed from the side, ah, jumped into the, to the icy water, oh, and struck out for the dark, rocky shore. Ha ha, just like rats from our sinking ship, said Captain Pogosh as he and his crew waited, watched it sightly from the gleaming deck of the black pig. Take ship had drifted onto the jagged rocks and was breaking up fast. Splendid, splendid, how clever I was to buy all that luminous paint and cover the black pig from stem to stern, my hearties. Tom, the cabin boy, smiled as he heard the captain's boast. A lot he had to do with it, he thought. But he went on cleaning the paintbrushes and said nothing. The end.